This episode of the Bottom Line Podcast is dedicated to Rod Gilbert and Jimmy Hayes. May they both rest in peace. What's going on? This is the Bottom Line Podcast presented by Anchor.fm, your home for sports and entertainment talk. Jimmy Ferrezi, and yes, our boy has returned. Mr. Taco himself, Austin Myers, is back in the building. We hope you're doing well. Austin, how the heck have you been? It's been a while, man. It's been a bit. (laughs) Quite a bit. Everything all right with you? Everything's just fine. (laughs) A little more enthusiasm there, pal. No, I'm just, I'm just playing with you. But in, in all seriousness, it's great to have you back. We, re, we really have missed you on the podcast. We're good to, we're very happy to have you back. But unfortunately, Neil is not with us for this episode. He, uh, he's dealing with some stuff right now. But you know what? He is okay. Don't worry. He will be joining us in the next episode. So don't you worry. He's not going anywhere anytime soon. So before we get started, the usual stuff you already know, hit us up on all social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and yes, regrettably so, TikTok, at bottom line WFCX, use hashtag bottom line. We haven't posted anything on TikTok yet, but... Um, we'll just, get there. We'll <laughs> get there. Bear with us. <laughs> just don't expect us to do any of those crazy challenges or dance moves, because we oh, come are, on, uh, we're, oh, we're, come on, we're, we're not those people. Oh, come on, Jimmy. I wanted to watch you do the crate challenge. No, <laughs> I am not going to subtract myself to stupidity like that, but okay. I digress. But we will be posting content on TikTok very, very soon. But again, please do not make us regret this decision. Please go follow us again at Bottom Line WMCX on TikTok and on all social media as well. And also make sure you hit that subscribe button if you're watching on YouTube and click that bell so you don't miss an episode and subscribe on all audio platforms, include Jimmy when searching for this podcast and again use hashtag bottom line for social media and leave your thoughts on the topic at hand and today today is a bit uh a bit personal for me because i am a diehard ranger fan for those that don't know austin you know neil knows obviously as well you guys have known me long enough to know that i've been a ranger fan all my life i grew up with uh, the likes of uh, brian leach adam graves mike richter jeff buka boom should I go Books. on? No. <laughs> exactly. Books. Exactly, Austin. Exactly. Thank you. But I grew up with the early to late 90s teams, even when they did have Wayne Gretzky, which was a play who was an absolute pleasure to watch play growing up in my childhood. But I've been a Ranger fan all my life. So today is uh, quite a bit of an emotional episode and especially with the passing of uh, Roger Bear I mean my god I mean 80 years young I mean I, I know he's been going through some uh, I know he's been going through some health problems as of late so I, I guess that was kind of the uh, the downfall unfortunately so rest in peace to uh, Roger Bear God rest his soul and also to Jimmy Hayes I mean my god I mean way too young 31 years young I mean just such such a tragic it's been such a tragic couple of days and and it's not even not even just in the major leagues. You look at what happened in I, I want to say it was in Canada, where we had the three prospects that oh. died in the car crash. It's oh it's just been, it's been it's that, been t- it's been a really tough week for yeah many of was, us in the hockey community. It's, yeah, that 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 especially was mm-hmm. that, that, that one know, hit that, hard. That really breaks your heart, man. Really I mean, does. and I mean the the whole prospect thing. That one hit hard because they were all teenagers, so it was oh. like. Yeah, so we just wanted to start off this episode by saying God rest the souls of those three kids, Roger Bear and Jimmy Hayes. We know you guys are all in a better place now, so keep uh, keep it up up there, but don't do anything too stupid. <laughs> but seriously, rest in peace to their souls, and uh, may, uh, may God comfort them and their families, absolutely. Yeah. So, and today's episode makes it a bit more emotional, particularly if you were a Ranger fan like myself. And hey, if you're just a hockey fan in general and you admire this guy, 
you're probably feeling some type of way too. As in this episode, we're going to be talking about the life and career of one Henrik Lundqvist, the king, as he is known, King Hank. Although I have made the argument in the past, and Neil can vouch for me, vouch for me when I say this, I've always made the argument that you're not really a king until you win a Stanley Cup. Well, I, I now know why people have called him the king. Obviously, he has won a couple of championships. He's won a couple of gold medals in Sweden, all that other stuff. He's won IIHF World Championships. So he has won championships, but unfortunately, he will no longer have the chance to compete for a Stanley Cup championship, which is a damn shame because if there's any goaltender who deserved to win a Stanley Cup, it was that man right there. I mean, the work ethic that he put on every single night putting the team on his back for pretty much his entire career. There was nobody who deserved a cup more than Henry Glunquist. Now, let me just read you. you know, yeah, I'm just going to say, I just, no, go ahead, said, go ahead. I, I just about said Mark andre Fleury, but then I remembered, oh, wait, he's actually got cups. I was just going to say. <laughs> well, please, please forgive me. It's all right, Austin. All is forgiven. All is forgiven. But let me read you the official statement that Henry Glunquist put out just about a week ago on social media. This is from his official Instagram page. And as uh, Austin, uh, if you're not watching on YouTube, Austin is adjusting his uh, his uh, jersey wall right there. He's got his Tavares jersey showing along with uh, Max Pacioretty and uh, Mark andre Fleury right there. So if you're not watching on YouTube, just, uh, just out of curiosity. Oh, and he's also wearing a Blackhawks jersey and a Blackhawks hat. So just in case. Oh, uh, oh, oh there it is. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> There it is. Yeah, my, my you you, you want to tell the people whose jersey you're wearing for those who are not watching yeah. on YouTube? Yeah, it's a uh, Big Daddy Duncan Keith. Oh, Dun- Duncan Keith. There you go, <laughs> m- m- Mister. Uh, I win two cups with Chicago, and then decide to go to Edmonton for some odd reason. Uh, I, I I I I mean, I guess I they were paying. Him. I mean, I guess they were going to pay more. I don't know. Eh, money talks, man. Money talks. <laughs> But anyway, we're getting sidetracked here. We apologize. But here is <laughs> isn't that normal for us? <laughs> you know, no, it's it's normal. It's normal for us now. Well, at least nowadays it's normal. But here is Henrik Lundqvist. It's all my fault. <laughs> Henrik Lundqvist's official statement on Instagram just about a week ago. It's time. For the last 30 years, I've devoted my life to the game of hockey. And now it's time to walk away from the game I love and begin a new chapter. The future excites me. I've met so many amazing people over the years that will help to guide and inspire me in my new journey. There are many things I love about this game. From the excitement I felt as an eight-year-old at my first practice to the 15 years of butterflies I had every time I took the ice in the greatest city in the world. I'm extremely grateful for what hockey has brought me and taught me in life. These lessons will never leave me. Thank you to all the coaches and players that helped me throughout my career. Thank you to Swedish hockey from growing up and playing in Sweden to ultimately representing my country on the world stage. These are some of, some of my proudest moments. Thank you to the New York Rangers and New York City. I'm a born Swede, but I'll always feel like a New Yorker, thanks to you. Thank you to the NHL. This league was everything I dreamed of and more. Lastly, thank you to the game of hockey and its fans. You gave my life purpose, and I have loved every single minute of it. Thank you all. Not going to lie. When I first read that, a tear shed. And oh, yeah. I, I mean that with all honest I mean, to God seriousness, a tear shed. I mean, because, even as even as just a hockey fan, mm-hmm. when I read that, it, it, it hit the field because it's like this man was possibly one of the, I, mean, I want to say greatest, but it's, in our generation, yeah, that's what he was. Well, yeah, when you look, I, I, when I was, was going to bring that up. Yeah, when absolutely. you look at when you look at people that have done so much, like it, right now in this generation that we're in, you've got people that when you bring up, oh, who's the better goaltender? Get people bring up names such as Mark Andre. Some would even say Mark Ambrosio, Carey Price, Carey Price, Connor Halibut. I mean. Even mm. though he's new, even though he's a newer goaltender, he's still one of the best of our generation right now. Right. And, yeah. and if you ask, some people will say Hendrik Lundqvist because of who, not only because of who he was on the ice, but off ice too. 
Yeah, yeah. I was. We'll, we'll, we'll definitely talk more about that in a little bit, but you bring up an excellent point right there. But look, Martin Brodeur is the greatest goaltender of all time. There is absolutely no debating that whatsoever. And this is coming from a Ranger fan speaking, by the way. Martin Brodeur, sorry, he is the greatest goaltender to ever play the position. If you disagree, then you do not watch hockey. Sorry, you just don't. But of this generation, I happen to agree. Of this generation, Henrik Gunkus is one of the best goaltenders we've ever seen. And let me give you some numbers here to back that up. He won the Vesna Trophy in 2011-2012 for being the NHL's top goaltender. 30-plus wins in each of his first seven seasons. That's an NHL record, by the way. 61 career playoff wins. Won six consecutive Game 7s. 459 wins, which is sixth all-time behind Ed Belfour, who's in the top five. A 2.43 goals against average. A .918 save percentage. Not that one. I I, 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 I don't even. That that one. Yep, you're you're pointing out for you're pointing out, yep, Fleur, Fleur is ahead of Hank. Fleur is ahead of Hank, I know. Great, but, gr- 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 greatest, but point to still, being, greatest goaltender to still play. <laughs> Keyword, keywords there, to still play. Those are the keywords there, my still, but I, I'm, I, You know what? You know what? I'm calling it right now, and this time next year, we're going to make an episode, Who Was Mark Andre? I'm calling it. Put me... <laughs> Put me in the books right now. Oh, Mark man. Andre will retire at the end of the season. Oh, wow, wow! He Bold already, take. he Bold already take. doesn't, he doesn't want to be in Chicago, but he's there, and he's only got. I'm pretty sure he's only got a one year. No, they they did sign up to a one year deal. You're it's right. It's a one year, so we'll see. We'll see what happens, but and unless, I, I like that. unless magically. I mean, magically, Vegas coaching and coaching and GM staff gets it through their thick skulls and says, "Oh, we need flour again." It's, okay, but that's not a that's not the subject here. It's about Hank. Well, you well you brought it up anyway, so hey, might as well get it out now, right? <laughs> oh, oh, t- you said we were getting the trade deadline episode in soon. Oh. Goodness gracious. I'm just, oh, I'm ready oh, to boy. go off. Oh boy. Yeah, that that that's a subject for another episode. But you said, anyway. You said free agency. You said a free agency episode. Mm, yeah. Austin's already getting prepared for that, but that, that'll be coming very, very soon. But I back to the topic weeks. at hand here. Two weeks. Look, I've watched Henry Glunquist play his entire career from 2005 to 2020. That's when he was been with the Rangers. But he's he was drafted. In 2000, all right? Not even a first-round pick, by the way. I should keep that in mind. I believe it was a seventh-round pick. Correct me if I'm wrong. It was either in the seventh round or the sixth round. Somebody correct me on that. But the point being, I have watched this man. Yes, go ahead, Austin. I'm sorry. Hey, Google. When was Hendrik Lundqvist drafted? Hendrik Lundqvist was drafted on 2020, 2005, and others. Interesting. (laughs) Hey, Google. Google. What pick was Hendrik Lundqvist in the draft? On the website NHL.com, they say, but 15 years after he was the 205th player selected at the 2000 NHL draft, there's no question New York Rangers goaltender Henrik Lundqvist is not your average seventh round selection. 205th pick overall. Thank you, Google, for that. And thank you for doing that, Austin. (laughs) When when in doubt, when in doubt, go to Google. But the 205th pick overall in the NHL draft in 2000. Think about that. Not even a first-round pick, and look what he'd accomplished his entire career. No, he didn't win a Stanley Cup, unfortunately. And again, like I said before, there was no goaltender from this generation that deserved a cup more than Henrik Lundqvist. Because, Austin, I have defended this man since day one. And again, Neil can vouch for me when I say this. And he is in agreement with me when I say this. And I know a majority of Ranger fans agree with me with this as well, while some Ranger fans are delusional. I'm going to call it like it is. A lot of Ranger fans are delusional. Sorry, it is what it is. But anyway, I'm getting beside myself here. The teams that have been built around Henrik Lundqvist for a majority of his career have sucked 
sucked. The only reason why the Rangers have been a relevant team year after year after year was because of the man in goal. Why is that? They didn't because they did not need to worry about their man in goal. They knew he was going to come into that game and work his heart out. Quite literally, I might add. And the reason why I say that is because the reason why he retired is because of the heart issues he has been dealing with. And oh, by the way, when the Rangers drafted him, they knew about his heart issues. So it's not like they were like, oh, we're just going to completely ignore your issues. We're just going to go out there and play. No, they monitored him throughout practice. They asked him if he was okay to go. And he said yes. Robert they Leonard, monitored is that him you? every single day. So don't come at me with, oh, the Rangers never checked up on him because that's false. Robert Leonard, is that you? <laughs> God. Now you're taking shots at Leonard? I love him, but I... I digress. Oh my god! I, I, I'm I'm not trying to I'm not trying to piss off the Islanders or Golden Knights or Buffalo well, fan base, but uh, I don't think we can trust him. We we had we had all this, and now that's gone. Well, welcome back, Austin. You're about to get roasted, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, no. In, in all seriousness, look, set fire to the rain. Oh my god. Look, Henrik Lundqvist, again, the teams that have been around him, especially 2014, which I know we may not want to go back to that as Ranger fans, but I'm going to go back to it anyway for this specific purpose. He carried, single-handedly carried that team to the Stanley Cup Finals. And look, I will agree the Rangers had no business playing the Kings that year, and if it wasn't for a puck being stopped in the crease the Rangers would have been swept and the Kings would have won the Stanley Cup on Madison Square Garden ice. Okay? I'm just going to get that out of the way right now. But again, Henrik Lundqvist single-handedly carried this team on his back for a majority of his career. This is the same man who, I forget exactly what year and what game this was, but there was a game where he took a slap shot to the neck and almost had a stroke. If he would have kept playing, he probably would have had a stroke. That is how much this man literally put his heart out on the ice every single night. So I don't want to hear anybody question this man's work ethic. He worked his ass off for that team every single night. So I don't want to hear it. But with that being said, we must ask this question. Is he a Hall of Fame goaltender? And ladies and gentlemen, I think the answer is pretty much straightforward. The answer is yes. The answer is 100% yes. Now, look, you can come to me and say, oh, but he didn't win a championship. And look, I have argued in the past, and to go off hockey for a second here, I have argued in the past, and I've changed my mind now about this guy because this guy's a Hall of Famer now. But I foolishly have argued that Clayton Kershaw is not a Hall of Famer. And I said that because of his lack of postseason success. Now that he has gotten over that hump and finally has a World Series ring, now he is a Hall of Famer. But I digress there. But the point All being... Right. All right. No, go, go, go ahead, Austin. I do want to point something out about a long quiz for a second. Sure. This man's pads were absolutely fantastic. Oh, yes. Um, this man's pads. Yeah, like, the, the way his pads, like, represented the team not, and not the even, city. Not even, I mean, not come even on that. now. Not even that. Some people might hate me for this take, but his 2012 Winter Classic pads are fucking beautiful. Oh, oh, I love those. The, the, I love the, those the, pads. The kind of, like, the kind of, like, off tan color. Yes. Oh. And then, and then he started, what, I want to say it was 2018 with the Statue of Liberty on it. Oh my. Now, granted, granted, that's a New Jersey thing, but we'll we'll let that argument go. But I mean, so- I mean it's okay. <laughs> it, 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 it's honestly okay. Oh my god! But it, it could be worse. Let's true. just rem- let's just remember. And yes, I'm about to take shots at somebody. I mean, let, yeah. just just let me, let's let's remember one thing: Islanders saying want the fishermen back. Wow, <laughs> man. But 
But yes, if, if I don't get roasted by point, this, if I don't get roasted in the comment section this week, this is a fucking failure. <laughs> to your point, have, though, yes, his pads, his pads were absolute fire. There's no debating that. And I mean, we can say the same thing about a lot of goaltenders right now because everybody's pads have been fantastic lately. Very true. But Hanks, Hanks oh was God. Hanks were beautiful. Oh, oh, they I, were on a whole other level. I re- and yes, this is getting off topic again, but. With everything going on, I really hope Elvis Murray with leaking does something special with his pads this year mm. because of everything going on. Like, just saying. <laughs> we'll see. We'll and, see. And, 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 and I hate Columbus. I have to resort to liking them because Adam Boquist is there now. Really hurts. Uh, but what can you it do? Will all, it will all be okay. But, uh, Hendrik Lundqvist pads. Sorry, I didn't understand, but I found something similar. Nobody cares, Google. <laughs> anyway, but anyway. But yes, back we, to the, we digress. We digress. Yes. But yes, he is a Hall of Famer. Is he a first ballot Hall of Famer? No, he is, no. He is not. A, he's not a first ballot Hall if, of Famer. No. If, anybody, if anybody is a first ballot Hall of Famer, it's going to be Mark andre I'm sorry, but it's true. Mm. I Mr. mean, you, what you, you do kind of make a you do kind of make a good argument got, for it. I mean, compared to Hendrik Lundqvist, yes, they're very close in stats. But on one hand, one has rings, one doesn't. Mm. Sorry, Hank, we love you. <laughs> no, no, I mean, it's 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 a fair argument. And I, I can't argue. I mean, with that. and like you said, yes, it matters to have championships and this and that, but. Not everything's about the championship. It's about exactly. the stats that you put down. You exactly. can be, you can be on the Buffalo Sabers, and be the world's best. Hell, hell, you can be Connor McDavid, win zero championships, and you can still be a Hall of Famer. I, I mean, I mean, C- Connor McDavid's still probably going to go to the Hall. Of He's going to go to the Hall. Is he going to be a first ballot? Probably. No. Probably. No. I guarantee you, more than likely. If it's mm, all right, okay. I'm okay. I'm just saying if when that time comes, he's probably gonna be a first round. Hendrick's in a place right now where the Hall of Fame the Hall of Fame groups that are coming are a little on the on the rough side because it's like right. you had some really big guys go and retire lately. Like like a big big dust in Buffalo. Yeah. Is he is he a first ballot Hall of Famer? No. No, not really. Will he be a first Bella Hall of Famer? It's possible. Yeah. But, you, you know, I'm still waiting for the people that can't really do much on the ice to leave. Because they're never going to make the Hall of Fame. It's Raiden McNabb, I'm talking to you. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> but, listen, the answer, is he a Hall of Fame goaltender? The answer is absolutely 100%. Yes. First ballot, hell no. But does, Hall of Fame goaltender, absolutely yes. yes. And but, does he do but and does he deserve his own trophy case somewhere in the hockey hall of fame and to have all his pads and stuff set up? Yes. He, he most likely does, yes. But I, I'm I'm calling him a Hall of Famer, not just for his on the ice stats. No, his off ice is famous. But his too. off ice work. Holy crap. You want to talk about somebody who absolutely cares about his community. The work that Henrik Lundqvist has done for not just his own foundation, the Henrik Lundqvist Foundation, but the Garden of Dreams Foundation is unbelievable. The smiles that I have seen on so many kids in that foundation that have met this man have been have been absolutely astounding. Astounding to me, the work that he's done for both of his, for both Garden of Dreams and Hammer Lundqvist Foundation have been unbelievable. In fact, now that his playing days are over, he is definitely going to be more recognized now for his charity work. Now that he's going to be focusing more so on that, but people will definitely recognize him for his play, no question about it. But his off the ice work, that you you can't deny how genuine of a person he is. And this is the question I have. If you're Hendrik Lundqvist and you're now retired, do you stay in New York or do you go somewhere else? Oh, man. 
I mean, are, are you talking about the fact that he signed a one-year deal with the Capitals and never played a single game with them? <laughs> I mean, I, to, I, to be fair, that is a bit harsh due to the fact that he had his heart health issues and he had to. I mean, to be out. fair, but look at who they had to play in the playoffs. True. They had True. to play. They had to use Craig Anderson. Hell yeah. True. <laughs> True. <laughs> That is true. Uh, I did forget about that. And l- let's not forget, since we're talking about the Capitals, they gave away Vitek Vanacek to Seattle and then snaked him and got him back. And they gave up Braden Holpe to Vancouver for some reason, which and, I have no idea where, why they and, did that. And now where is Holpe? Eh, I think he's still with Vancouver. No, he? He, no, no, they will. Oh, no. He, he got traded, I, I believe. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm going to have to look this up now. Yeah, well, well while we find that out. But <laughs> – Listen, the bottom line for me is simply this. Henrik Lundqvist, despite the fact that he does okay. not have one championship. Yes, Austin? Okay. What? Yo, where is he? Brayden Nolby's now with the Dallas Stars. Oh, right. I forgot. Okay. <laughs> I forgot about that. Jeez. <laughs> oh, boy. <sighs> Oh, my, man, my man said, I'm going to win a cup with Washington, go to Vancouver, play like absolute garbage, and then go to Dallas. Unbelievable. <laughs> Once again, but, free agency. Uh-huh. But, again, the, the bottom line is simply this. You can disagree with Austin and I all you want to. And, again, you're more than welcome to. That's the beauty of sports talk. But, Henrik Lundqvist, whether you – are a Ranger fan and have watched him his entire career like me, or even if you're a Devil fan like Neil, and if you're a hockey fan like the rest of the world is, and if you're a Vegas fan, a Leafs fan, and a Blackhawks fan like Austin is. But look, regardless of I, I'm still waiting to be are, roasted. <laughs> I'm just waiting for it. I mean, they're going to be like, let's see, this man's a Leafs fan a Blackhawks fan, and a Vegas fan. Holy, he's the ultimate bandwagon. Oh, my God. But but listen, regardless of what team you're a fan of, if you've watched Henrik Lundqvist, you can't deny that this man has worked his tail off his entire career, has put the team on his back, has had little to no help whatsoever, and still has close to 460 wins in his NHL career. Okay. Oh, and by the way, by the way... Sorry, Austin. Go ahead. You said yes, li- yes, little help. But he's had Chris Kreider, Mick Zibanejad. Who else? I know there's a name I'm forgetting. Fuck. <laughs> well, look, Zuccarello. Yeah, oh, oh, Zook. I miss him so much. Let's see. Did Hun- did Lundquist play with Panarin for a brief time? Yes, for a brief time. Right. He for had Panarin. Time. He had Panarin at one point. Mm-hmm. He had I I I want to say Adam Fox. I'm not sure how long he's been with y'all. No, he he played he played with them in 2020. Okay, he had Adam Fox, who by far is a very good defenseman. Congrats to no, him. Man. Norris Trophy winning defenseman. Congrats Adam Fox, to him for his uh, Norris Trophy win. And and, th- and thank you to everybody who actually watches hockey to finally see it. But anyway, I mean I digress, but uh. Adam Pellick's fantastic too. After his uh, I mean, absolute yes, joke. yes, you're you're right, you're right. But but I mean, he's definitely had some help. Where yes, he, some, but very little. Yeah, very I mean, little. I mean, you guys yes. are still look. You guys has he given up? Has he given up soft goals? Absolutely. But we guess all what? have every goaltender does. Yeah, even for, Martin Brodeur, the greatest goalie of all time, has given up soft goals. We're not going to talk about the uh, the bad bounce against uh, the Canadians. Oh, Jesus Christmas. Jesus Christ. Oh, no. That one, that one still stinks, and it's been a few months. Unbelievable. Everybody gives away soft. You know, mm-hmm. we even Hank. About, Hank gives away soft goals, but there, there's one that really does. No, oh, I, I I think I know where you're going with this. Where are we and, we're, and we're not going to get into that conversation. No, no where are we going? Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to say it. Go ahead. No, no say it. No, no, you say, say it. it. Say it. You, nope, say it. you say it. You, you say, say it. it. You say it. We'll say it on three. One, One two, two, 
three. Mm-hmm. Malcolm Subban. Malcolm Subban. Malcolm Subban. <laughs> Malcolm Subban. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, but I'm, I'm, like I was like I was saying before, again, th- th- this is normal for us to go off track. <laughs> we're, we're sorry. We, we can't help ourselves. No, there's, there's too much to talk about. On a somber moment. We're sorry. If you don't like it, please turn off the please turn it off. If you don't like it, just, just turn it off. We don't care. Just turn it off. If you don't like it, you can give us hate comments. I will I will respond to each and every one of you. Or you'll have Austin roast you. But anyway, or, like or, I was saying before, yeah, the Rangers or, themselves. Or if you don't like it, you can go ahead and roast me. All is good. Well, there you go. <laughs> but the Rangers themselves did put out a statement on the same day Han- Hank announced his retirement. And it says the following. And this is from their social media page as well. This is from Instagram. It is with mixed emotions that the New York Rangers offer our best wishes and heartfelt gratitude to Henrik Lundqvist on the announcement of his retirement. Henrik's commitment to excellence made him one of the best goaltenders to ever play the game of hockey, and we are so fortunate to have witnessed his greatness firsthand for 15 years. As we congratulate Henrik on an extraordinary career and a lasting legacy of success, charity, and character, we are honored to announce that we will retire his number and raise his jersey to the rafters at an upcoming game this season. Henrik is and always will be a Ranger. Job well done by the New York Rangers. I love this, and I don't care what it costs. I will be at that game. Just name the date. I'm going. Yes. I want to be there for it. All all I want is a puck, if you can... If you can make that happen, signed by Henrik Lundqvist. No, no, no. I don't even. I don't even want it signed. If it's just like, if it's a puck that says Lundqvist number retirement ceremony or something on it. There you go. I'm I'm happy. We're trying to we're trying to get a puck from every team in the NHL over here. There you go. We're at uh we're at yeah, maybe we can make that happen. We're at two. We have a Vegas and uh Chicago. There you go. Yeah, maybe I can make that happen. Who knows? But look, I mean, I that's mean, a job yeah. well done. I mean, let's be real. We're gonna. I want to go see the uh, what is it? The Prudential Center. I want to say it is. Mm. How far is that from y'all? Ooh, about forty-five minutes. All right, that's that's a good thing. I know where we're going when I come in. <laughs> oh my god! Let's get Neil. I hope we'll have to go to Prudential Center for no reason. <laughs> But seriously, though, that, that, that's a job well done by the Rangers. I'm really, really happy that they're doing this. And this season, too, makes yeah. it even better. And it's well-deserved for one of the best goaltenders of See, this generation. That is the key of this generation. We say this season, but we see what's going on. We might get shut down again. Uh, I, I, we pray we don't, but eh. it, it's possible. I don't think we. I don't think we will, but we'll see what happens. I mean, I, I, you know, nope, nope, not gonna say anything. Nope, not gonna say anything. It's better off if we don't, because I'm not trying to get canceled. You know? <laughs> Thank you, cancel culture, for ever existing. Wow, unfreaking believable. But <laughs> listen, the bottom line is simply this: Henry McLaughlin is a Hall of Fame goaltender who deserves every single achievement he got, especially when it comes to his off-ice work. Again, it is an absolute crime that he did not win a Stanley Cup. But at the end of the day, he is still, of this generation, one of the best goaltenders to ever play the game. And his character, his work ethic, and his off-ice work show it. Period. All right, quick edit there. Sorry about that. Apparently, Austin was going to say something rude off the air, but I'm not going to (laughs) say it. That wasn't going to be rude, but it's... Whatever, whatever. Well, welcome back, Austin. Welcome back. But anyway, that, <laughs> I, that's the bottom line. I do it out of love. Line. I that's do it out of love. What's that? I said I do it out of love, and you know it. <laughs> we know, man. You you know we love you. But that's the bottom line with Henry McLunquist. Look, you can disagree with Austin and I. That's totally fine. You're more than welcome to. Again, that's the beauty of sports. But let us know how you are feeling about Henry McLunquist and his retirement. Let us know on all social media, including TikTok, at Bottom Line WMCX. Use hashtag <laughs> Bottom Line. Just because you said something, I feel like I'm going to go into the freaking TikTok account and I'm just going to be like... First, go ahead. First ballot Hall of Famer. And by the way, speaking of TikTok, 
you will not just see me on TikTok. You will see Neil and Austin as well. So you won't just be seeing my ugly mug for once in your <laughs> life. You'll be seeing Austin and Neil's faces as well. So you'll they get more behind-the-scenes content than you hope for. You think they want to see my ugly mug too? Oh, come on. <laughs> but seriously. I mean, so, you're looking better than I do, Bubba. Oh, <laughs> well, I appreciate that. But eh, save that for off the air. But let us know what you think about the whole Henrik Lundqvist retirement at on all social media at bottom line WMCX hashtag bottom line don't forget you can also leave a voice message on the anchor app yes forgot you can still do that you can record your voice message on the anchor app and we may fe- feature you in a future episode that come is on, somebody, on the audience come on, side come on somebody do that i've yet to say i've yet to get a i have yet to witness us do an audience yes yes seriously seriously please i mean <laughs> i want i want one I, I don't care who it is if it's just you roasting the fuck out of me just do it Thank you, Austin. Thank you. But again, make sure you subscribe as well on all audio platforms as well as on YouTube and hit the bell so you don't miss an episode. Include Jimmy when searching for this podcast. But I will close by saying this. As a Ranger fan, thank you, Hank, for everything. All the best to you and your family and your retirement. And I can't wait till the day comes where I can see you and your jersey being raised up into the rafters right where it belongs. At the world's most famous arena, yeah, yes, Jim, Square Garden. Yeah, yes, Jimmy, yes, Jimmy. Hendrick Longquist himself is going to be raised. <laughs> you up know to what the I Raptors. meant. You know what I meant. No need to be snarky. <laughs> yes, you know Hendrick exactly Long- what I meant. They're gonna strap Hendrick Longquist up, and they're just gonna they're gonna raise him to the rafters, where he's gonna uh, spend the rest of his life. You knew exactly what I meant. No need to be snarky, but welcome back, <laughs> Austin. <laughs> Come on. I'm back. I got to cause some kind of cr- chaos. It's it's all right, but I don't in have, all, in I all don't have my buddy here. My, <laughs> my banner buddy's not here. I got to do something. <laughs> it is what it is, but in all seriousness, thank you, Hank, for everything. And I can't wait to see your number being raised to the Raptors at MSG this season. For Mr. Taco, welcome back, Austin, and for New Orleans. One second. Yes. Yes. You got to, you got to say your thank you, so I got to do something. No, no, go go ahead, go ahead. I, I I'm just gonna say I'm gonna say it right now. Thank you to Hank for putting on one hell of a show against Vegas when you played us. Uh, thank you for putting on a show whenever, uh, with just all the time. <laughs> Short, sweet, to the point. Short, I like sweet, it. To the point, and it's a, uh, it's sad to see you go because I always enjoyed watching the Mark Andre versus Longquist. Shit show we call it <laughs> because uh, because sometimes it felt like nobody was gonna let a puck in. Yeah, that that is true. That is true. That just so, that just shows you how dynamic they were. But now, but now we got to worry about. But now we got to worry about another goalie at hand by the name of Carey Fucking Christ! Oh my god! <laughs> Unbelievable. Eh, maybe, maybe he'll shut you up and win a Stanley Cup too. But we'll see what happens. Well, let's, uh, talk let, let, let's just remember. Let's just remember, the lightning damaged the cup, and it had to go to Montreal. True. And then I heard, I I believe it was Johnny Gord. I remember, I know one of them took the cup to the Bell Center to add insult to injury. I mean, but, but most importantly, we all have to remember one thing. Nikita Kucherov is egging the 18 million over cap. And it's the best thing ever. Oh, my God. You, <laughs> sir. You, sir. Oh, my God. Dude, I, I'm telling you, I love Nikita Kucherov and his $8 million over cap meeting. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, that will officially wrap it up for us. For Mr. Taco, welcome back, Austin. And for Newville Piano, I'm Jimmy Fadizzi. This is the Bottom Line Podcast, and we will see you in the next episode. Eight, 18 Peace. million over cap. We're 18 million over cap. Peace, everybody. Take care. And again, thank you, Hank, for everything.